What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to TTP Sports, and it's official out of the Philadelphia Flyers organization. The Flyers have signed Kevin Hayes to a long-term extension. It is a seven-year contract worth $50 million, which is an annual value of $7.14 million a season. And my f first thoughts on this signing, I like that we acquired Kevin Hayes to negotiate his rights. I like the fact, because I like Kevin Hayes as a player, I like what he brings to this organization as a possible second-line center because the Flyers haven't really had a true second-line center in years. And I like what Kevin Hayes can bring offensively, and I like what he can bring defensively because he's a really good two-way player. But looking at this signing from a... just analyzing it from that standpoint, it's just that... I'm split down the middle. I don't know what to think about this. Because I like Kevin Hayes as a player, but seven years at $7.14 million? Uh, I don't know what to think about that. Because I really think it's a little bit of an overpay. Because, I yeah, Kevin Hayes is a good player. We, all, we know that he's a good player in this league. But is he worth $7.14 million a season? Is he worth that $50 million? I don't know. I don't know like what to say about this because we all know when we hired Chuck Fletcher, we knew his past with the Minnesota Wild in that he's not really good with money. Like the contracts with Parise and Suter with them being like a combined ninety eight million dollars. And I really don't like I I wanna give Fletcher the benefit of the doubt going into this offseason because the front office really wants him to make this team a better contender for next season. He wants them to, they want him to fix the holes that Ron Hextall did not fix. But I'm just also afraid that Chuck Fletcher is going to go out and spend money willy-nilly and bringing us back into that cap hill that Ron Hextall was getting us out of. Because going into this offseason, we had at least $34 million in cap space. And now with this Kevin Hayes signing, the Matt Niskanen trade with the 30% retention of Gouda's salary... Uh, not retention, the retaining of Gudis' salary, and the uh, Justin Braun trade, that adds at least $12 million to the cap. And right now, with all these trades and signings complete, and they're official now, we, and also the buyout of Andrew McDonald, which added $3, three million to the cap, so if we didn't buy out Andrew McDonald, we'd probably be looking at possibly below $20 million in cap, but right now we have at least $22 million in cap space right before free agency and the draft. So, I really don't know, just re I really don't know what to think about this because I'm just sp so split down the middle and I hate feeling that way because I want to have an opinion. I want to have at least one side to an argument, but I really don't know what to think about this because I'm so split thinking that, yes, Kevin Hayes is a good player in this league, but the 50 million in total, it's a bit much. So, and also... We have a ton of RFAs that we have to sign. We have to sign Ivan Provorov. We have to sign Travis Connecting, Tra Travis Sanheim, maybe Scott Law and Ryan Hartman. We don't know yet, but the, the top three of Sanheim, Provorov, and Konechny, they're Provorov's going to want a payday, possibly Konechny. Sanheim, you could probably get away with it, a bridge deal. But I don't think two million, $22 million is not as enough to sign all these RFAs that we have. And we all know Chuck Fletcher is not done yet this offseason. We all know there's probably going to be another big trade upcoming. There's probably going to be more free agent signings because Fletcher has stated that he wants to sign or trade for a backup goaltender to help Carter Hart this coming season. So we really don't know what Chuck Fletcher is going to do. And I really think with this Kevin Hayes signing, that could possibly open the, open the market for trading more players from this roster. And it also, with this Kevin Hayes signing for the rest of the league, that opens up a lot of windows for players like Matt Duchesne or Temi Panarin to get even more money with the contracts that they want to sign to. they probably looking at this Kevin Hayes contract right now saying that, hey, Kevin Hayes is making $50 million in total for his contract. I want more money. I want at least $9 million a season. I want at least $10 million a season. And you probably look at the Eric Carlson contract. He's making $11.5 million over eight years, and that's a lot of money. And... Yeah, looking at the Kevin Hayes contract compared to the Eric Carlson contract, I would take Kevin Hayes' contract every day because it's cheaper. And I'm just not all for contracts going above $10 million because those can come to haunt you down the road. 
and that's somewhat what I'm afraid of with this Kevin Hayes contract, is that he's 27 years old right now, and the next seven years when his contract ends, he's going to be 34 or so. What are we going to be saying about this contract in, like, three to four years, possibly five years? Like, when is it going to be confirmed that this contract was worth the signing? Because if it doesn't become worth the signing, this can possibly be one of the worst contract signings in the league for the next few years. Because we need Kevin Hayes to be that second-line center for this team. We need him to produce. And we know Kevin Hayes, he hasn't surpassed... He's only surpassed 50 points once in his career. So... We need him on that second line, surpassing that 50-point total consistently, possibly getting to at least 60 points, maybe 70. But, and hopefully playing on a line with possibly Jacob Voracek and James Van Riemsdyk can help bring up his point total and make him a better player offensively. So, it's just like I said, I'm just really torn down the middle with this deal, and I don't know what to think about it. Because I'm just like, I'm coming back to the same two arguments. I like Kevin Hayes and I think he's a good player, but I don't think he's worth the fifty million. And and like what I said, Chuck Fletcher, with his history of spending money and it's not really good, he thinks in the now. He doesn't think down the road when these this type of contract can come back to haunt us because players down the road on this team that probably are going to need extensions, what What's going to happen with Nolan Patrick? What's going to happen with Oscar Lindblom? What's going to happen to players like Phil Myers, like Sean Couturier when his team-friendly deal comes to an end? Because when Couturier's contract comes to an end and he remains the player that he's been for the past two seasons, Couturier is going to want a major payday. And what if we don't have the cap to sign Sean Couturier to that major payday that he might want? And this is, would be the type of contract that comes back to haunt us because we signed Kevin Hayes to too much money. And yeah, P- Kevin Hayes, he probably wanted at least six million to six and a half mil. I would have been fine if it, this was the six year, the six year length at the six million to six and a half million. I wouldn't be complaining as much. But the fact that we overpaid him, even though we overpaid him by a little bit, it's still overpaid. And I, I'm just really scared of what this can possibly become. It, that this contract might come back to haunt us in the future, which is probably going to. And the only way it won't come back to haunt us is if Kevin Hayes becomes a consistent player with this team. He becomes a consistent producer, and he helps his team night in and night out. Which is probably not going to happen, but hopefully he can remain consistent on both sides of the ice, and he can notch at least 50 to 60 points a season. But, it always comes down to the money. And, I like the acquisition of Matt Niskanen. I was never a fan of the retaining of Gudis' salary because that adds another million to the cap, and Matt Niskanen is already making $5.75 million a season for the next two. I like the Justin Braun signing, because it's only a year at 3.8, so if Justin Braun does not work out, you can always let him walk. But those two guys, they add the veteran depth and leadership to the blue line that the Flyers stated that they needed to help mentor guys like Proroff, Sanheim, and Phil Myers. But then, looking at this signing more realistically, this can also open up many trades for the flyer, for players on this roster because we all know that Shane Gossesbear has been put up in trade rumors since the halfway through last season. So what if this opens up for traders like trades like play for players like Shane Gossesbear to probably leave this team? What if this opens up maybe Jake Voracek because it's also been rumors that Jake Voracek might be on the block, but with Jake Voracek's contract that might be unmovable. So. I really don't know what's going to happen. And you can also look at this from a prospect standpoint. What what would this mean for players like Joel Farabee? What would this mean for Morgan Frost, Isaac Ratcliffe? What if they prove at a training camp that they're ready to play at the NHL level? So where would they fit in on this roster? Would they fit in on a fourth line? Would they fit in on a third line? Because you already know the top six is going to be filled with Giroux, Couturier, Konechny, JVR, Hayes, and Jake Voracek. So really, the bottom six is really the only openings for these young guys to come in and to, to step into the NHL level to showcase what they can do. And really, the only spot I really see available for those young guys is probably the wing spot on the third line and probably the center and the right wing spot on the fourth line. Because what if we don't sign players like Scott Lawn or Ryan Hartman? That could open up possibilities for players like Morgan Frost to play a fourth line center role. 
which really, realistically, I don't want Morgan Frost to play a fourth line center role. I would prefer him on the third line wing, but that's another story for another day. So, just going back to the signing, I really just don't know what to think. And I really don't want to be split down the middle, but that's where I'm at right now. So, I like Kevin Hayes as a player, but I don't agree with the salary right now. Hopefully he proves us wrong and he makes and he makes it known that the contract signing him was worth it. But right now, the season hasn't started yet, and we have to wait for the season to start to see what Kevin Hayes can showcase for this team. So, what are your guys' thoughts on the Kevin Hayes signing? What are your guys' thoughts on the Flyers going further into free agency? Because we know Chuck Fletcher is not done, and he's probably going to continue to add to this team. So, what are your thoughts on that? And just, what, do you th what else do you think the Flyers need to add to make this team a better contender going into next season? So don't forget to drop a comment, don't forget to drop a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, everyone, and I will see you in the next one.